certain challenge that we're facing, uh, certainly within the energy space, is the transition. The transition from where we are, largely, for example, in ESCOM, almost 80% of our energy coming from coal, uh, and that we need to make that transition into renewables, and we need to make it in a way that continues to protect uh, the energy availability for this country. So our big focus has been to focus on making sure that we have a product to sell and product to offer South Africa, and that is energy security. But right now, as we all know, the big topic is around the tariffs. So the affordability is the next challenge. So the, this whole thing is, uh, we, we are not done. We have to make sure that we're coming up with prices, with tariffs that make this country attractive to investors. We are way down here in the bottom of, the, you know, of Africa, so far from many of the markets. And, and energy used to be the one thing that attracts investors in this country. The fact that our energy was, was affordable, was relatively cheap, uh, it's no longer the case now. But of course, it is a challenge that we have as a business where we need to come up with the ways and means of making sure that we get back to where we were. Otherwise, our companies in South Africa are not going to be competitive. This industry is not going to be competitive. We are not going to be able to attract investors there. But the reason why we need that great talent is for people to, to figure out this problem and come up with solutions that can help us to address the questions of affordability. At the same time, we have to balance this with the sustainability as we move across into renewables. So this is this energy trilemma that we are all facing and trying to balance all the time. It's a big challenge within the energy sector. And I th also think uh, for you, as, we, as you think about your, your, most of your products are being exported, but what kind of energy are you using to produce your products? Because if you continue to use energy that is not coming out from clean sources, there is going to be a huge penalty on your products as you sell them in other geographies. So that's a challenge. And this is something that we, as an industry, you need to pay attention to. And force us, as ESCOM, to make the changes that we need to make to help you to continue to be uh, competitive in your space. So this is the second uh, big challenge uh, in my mind. The third one is, uh, is really about the, the environment. Mm. Uh, I don't know whether many of you know Edmund Hillary. He said something quite curious. He said environmental problems are really social problems anyway. They, are, they begin with people as the cause and end with people as the victims. Mm. And this is true. We all are sitting in an environment where, where this, in the communities uh, where we work, as much as some of the communities <laughs> want our support, but we need to pay attention to the impact, the harm that we do to some of these communities. Uh, the good thing is that most of the companies that are here, if they are listed, uh, you would hear from your investors that uh, the focus on ESG now is, is like top priority. Top priority. So the key for me, if I were to leave one message here, don't, don't allow ESG to be that thing that is driven on the side there. It should be something that is part of your strategy as a business, integrate it. You need to use ESG actually as a source of competitive advantage. How can you infuse it in every aspect of your business to make sure that you drive down your costs whilst you are doing the, all of the, you comply, but at the same time you are using it to drive innovation, you are using it to have a positive impact in the spaces where you are operating. I heard that uh, the good thing that in your space, there is no such a thing as policy uncertainty. <laughs> Everything now is certain in the mining, 
you know, that's a great thing. It's not the case in, in the energy space. Uh, so we are still battling with, with some of this. Uh, when you look at, for example, the fact that our tariffs uh, are not reflective of where we are as an industry. You know, as an industry, we have said that we, we have embraced the unbundling of ESCOM into three uh, separate entities, generation, transmission, and distribution. Uh, we need to move to a, a regime where we've got uh, tariffs that are unbundled to reflect where we are as a business. Not just one tariff, but a tariff that talks to the different components of our business. That's not where we are. NASA is not ready with that. We continue to have challenges uh, in, in many ways. In order for us to get to where we need to, we'll think of capacitating and supporting NASA. You know? So these are some of the things that uh, we, as an industry, will have to continue to be thinking about how do we work with government to support them in order for the government to serve us better. Of course, you've got many different uh, associations and bodies in the mining sector that are able to do all of this on your behalf. Uh, but, but this is something that needs to be done intentionally. Technology, this is the one big area where I think the mining sector is not known to be one of the early adopters of technology. Uh, but if you, if you are not, you better get to a point where you get yourself comfortable with technology because it is one of those things that are going to help you to be even more operationally efficient, uh, help you to, to be much more, when you look at the outcomes, uh, with the assistance of technology, you can be able to do explorations better, you can do all sorts of things better. Uh, so digital transformation is, is something that is top of, of your agenda. It should be top of your agenda. If it isn't, then you have a problem. You know? And we are here to, to can help you consult around that. Uh, the last point I'd like to make is that when it comes to geopolitics, uh, this is something that we typically see is happening elsewhere there, and we, we do not think that it affects us. But look at the, the Russia-Ukraine uh, challenge, that the, the whole conflict there, it had huge impact on what is happening here in South Africa. Mm. In fact, positive impact. So we need to pay attention to, this, to geopolitics. Uh, but my, the point I want to land here is that as a, as a continent and also as South Africa, we need to be clear about our our national agenda. What is, what is it that we want? Be clear. And as we engage with some of the partners out there, let us not engage them uh, begging or asking, can you please help us? We need to understand that we are sitting with some of the critical minerals that are here, and everybody wants them. And as we engage in these negotiations, let us advance the agenda of the country, the agenda of the region. What we see, though, is that these engagements, these negotiations, uh, we are relatively weak. I'm talking now uh, the royal we as uh, yeah, the people that represent us, in particular in the political space, they are weak, they are unable to to make sure that we have win-win outcomes. This is where we come in as business, where we should be supporting our government to make sure that the negotiations that are happening, we are able to get the most out of those, given the challenges that we are facing our country. When we're talking about beneficiation, uh, this is a perfect opportunity, you know, where they want some of our minerals. That's fantastic. And, but maybe we must have different conversations around making sure that we continue to add value on the continent versus taking some of the product outside of the continent.